Welcome to the group exhibit Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries at the Hanover Fair 2017. We're here at a technical forum and uh, my name is Muriel Boakas. Today's presentation is about testing and demonstration of fuel cells and hydrogen technologies at DTU. Uh, welcome with me on stage, uh, Center Manager of DTU Energy, Dr. Eva Raven Nielsen. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you. And thank you, audience, for showing up and listening. Um, I will tell about, uh, first, the FCH test center at DTU Energy, which I represent. I will inform you about our testing and test procedures on solid oxide fuel cells and electrolysis that we develop. And finally, I will give three examples of demonstration projects that we are part of. First of all, FCH test center, the fuel cells and hydrogen test center, is part of DTU Energy at the Technical University of Denmark. We are a quite large department uh, focusing on a number of energy technologies. Uh, all on energy conversion and storage. Um, more than 100 people are working on fuel cells and electrolysis, and further people are working on batteries, on polymer solar cells, and other energy storage technologies. We have been making R&D on fuel cells since 87, uh, so we have a long uh, history back on especially solid oxide fuel cells. And for quite some years now, we have been assisting companies in commercial terms of testing uh, cells and components stacks. Most of us are based at the um, Riesø campus in the city of Roskilde, if I can make it work. And uh, our main campus is in Copenhagen. In the department, we spend from rather basic research to very applied research and, and demonstration. Uh, everything, anything we do, we try to keep in mind that the research and results we get should someday go out in products on a market. So we consider that any procedure or process we are using should be scalable so it can be go up to industrial production level. Uh, we work with fuel cells, electrolysis, HT, PEM, storage, materials, and components. We work with manufacturing processes of uh, ceramics. We have a really skilled group in that, and we have production facilities um, to, to produce cells. We are very advanced in, in testing uh, test methods we develop. We do characterization and, and modeling. So we spend a lot, and we can do that because we are many people. Our test center group uh, offers testing, training for engineers and technicians, and we offer a consultancy for, for companies. Uh, we, all we do is deal with uh, advanced testing, and demonstration of components and systems. We're much involved in test procedures, standardization, and also a lot of project work, like you will see in a while. So what kind of testing do we offer? Um, I think part of the heart of our department is electrochemical testing of solid oxide fuel cells and electrolysis cells. We have been doing this since almost since the beginning, by uh, IV curves and impedance spectroscopy. We have what we call a fingerprint, which can characterize a cell in very detail, and it can give information of the resistance in the various layers or interlayers. Is it the diffusion resistance that makes up the resistance of the entire cell? When we do this characterization, characterization on new cells, and after a long testing, we can say what part of the cells are responsible for the degradation. So is it the uh, 
microstructure uh, that changes and changes diffusion, for example. Is there coarsening? That is the reason. We test single cells, small stacks, and uh, also full stacks. We are um, manning up on, on larger uh, modules by now. The electrochemical testing we supplement with microstructure characterization. So that's also why we are able to interpret the results rather precisely. Because if the electrochemists say it must be diffusion, and then the microscopists say, yeah, we can see a coarsening here. Um, or we can see, like in this photo, the there are two different gray colors and then the white. It's difficult to see on the screen, but both the light gray and the white is nickel particles. But the way we analyze this uh, picture, the way we make these measurements, the white nickel particles are electrical con um, connected with each other. So they are what we call percolated. So it can contribute to the electrical um, conduction of, uh, of this material. And the light gray are more isolated particles, so they cannot take part. And often we can see after a long testing period, long time of operation, that this is less interconnected than before, and that is a reason for degradation. That is one good example of the very tailor-made specialized uh, characterization methods we have developed and offer in our department. We do corrosion testing. We do it at relevant conditions, so at high temperature and in a fuel cell condition, so to speak. Um, we not only measure the weight gain that you see from the, this graph, but we also measure the development in area-specific resistance. Uh, we can do this on uh, interconnects, or uh, if it's metal-supported cells, we can characterize the metal support. We can also uh, help you develop or characterize any protection layers that you apply to uh, a metal support. We offer um, mechanical testing, again, in the relevant conditions, so at high temperature, in the specific atmosphere, for example, in hydrogen, um, or hydrogen-nitrogen mi mixtures, of course. Um, we have um, the, the ability to test 15 samples in one go. So it's not heating up one sample, measuring and cooling down, but a lot of samples at the same time, which makes it efficient, and you will very fast get sufficient results to have reliable calculation of the mechanical um, strength, which is required when we speak mechanical properties. We have developed uh, equipment for high pressure testing, both for cells and stacks. So at the moment, we are testing uh, stacks at 30 bars. We can test in fuel cell mode and electrolysis mode or switching modes. We can characterize whatever goes on during that operation. And we are working on uh, improving to um, 100 bars and 50 bars for stacks. And finally, we offer ceramic cell test house, so it's a cell fixture. It's, uh, again, developed in our own department. It's very uh, robust. It's rather gas tight and uh, reliable, so you get as reproducible results as you can. If you want to learn more about DTU energy conversion and storage, you can here on Wednesday at the public forum, Anke Haken will give a presentation again on the activities at DTU Energy. You can also, of course, come to our booth, E61, which is um, almost in the opposite part of the orange area. It's a pretty purple booth, so you'll find it if you look for it. Then a bit about standardization. We are involved in um, SOFC and SOEC 
testing procedures. We want standardization because you have to report similar conditions if you want to compare results in literature, uh, your competitors' uh, results, if you want to compare someone. It, it, if people test at very different conditions, you, you, you cannot learn what's up and what's down. This uh, pro uh, project um, ends by the end of this month, and it's present here in the fair, here at uh, booth D66. So this is an EU project with its own booth. Um, and there will be two more presentations here at the Technical Forum on Wednesday with uh, Stephen MacPhail. And on Thursday uh, in morning, uh, I will be giving a presentation on the results and outcome of this work on standardization. What we did is develop a number of modules that are part of test programs that you can combine in any way that suits your objective. For example, electrochem electrochemical impedance spectroscopy, there's a, a guidance and a, um, parameters how to do it. And uh, again, temperature sensitivity. And a number of application-specific test programs have also been developed. You can find more uh, on the project websites and even more uh, in the coming month. But go and uh, visit the booth, D66, or, and come and join the presentations the next days. Then we have demonstration projects that we are highly involved in. These are uh, projects sponsored by the uh, FCH joint undertaking, of course, together with companies and, and uh, academic organizations like, like ourselves. We're involved in micro CHP demonstration, and CHP is combined heat and power. So it's heat and power for a house, so for residential applications. The Enfield project is ending in August, and it has been running for five years, and there are more than 1,000 units in fuel cells now in the field across Europe. Based on PEM, based on uh, SOFC, um, and all systems will be demonstrated or has been demonstrated between one and three years. We analyze the performance and the potential and barriers. Um, we issue a number of, of reports on the findings you can find on the webpage, enfield.eu. And also, this project coming to an end will publish a lot further results uh, over the summer. We have um, a large consortium in this project, including eight, ten man, uh, manufacturers, so they are competitors. We have uh, academic organizations and um, energy utilities and other organizations. It works incredibly well when you consider how large and wide this uh, consortium is. Then ramping up of micro CHP started quite some years back with projects like the German Kallux and the Danish micro CHP project with 500 units demonstrated. Now the Enfield project can conclude 1,000 units demonstrated. And to take it further, next step for the market uptake, the PACE project will demonstrate 2,600 units. And that started last year and will also last five years. Um, and this is hopefully, and we believe, the last step before we really reach mass market with this technology. It's a more condensed consortium. Um, and maybe working even more efficient. Uh, there has been a lot of development in the companies in the time that, has, uh, that the Enfield project has been ongoing. So these uh, are the partners that take up for the next step. 
The last project I will tell you about is a rather exciting project, the Big Hit project, which demonstrates the hydrogen economy in practice. It's um, with ITM Power uh, providing PEM electrolysis, FC FHA from Spain coordinating, and a number of other organizations. In the north of Scotland, we have the Orkney Islands, and they have a surplus of wind power. This we are going to convert into hydrogen by electrolysis. Hydrogen will be used for electricity production and fuel cell, uh, by fuel cells. There will be uh, fuel for the cars, a refueling station, and there will be hydrogen boiler, actually, providing heat to the local schools, because that's a use of the electricity that they cannot uh, make use of any, any other way. Besides the technical demonstration and the findings from that, we have, uh, especially us from DTU, will con um, conduct a number of an analysis, finding out the environmental benefits of this concept, social impact, business models, and we will show a way and make decision tool for what we call follower territories. So if Malta will take up this concept and more or less copy from Orkney Islands, they will have really good decision tool based on, on this project. If you want to hear more about this exciting project, Chris Hype from ITM Power will on Wednesday here at the Technical Forum make a presentation. I will encourage you to, to show up there. And this concludes my presentation. We are three colleagues all week and a few more visiting. And we are in the booth E61. You will be very welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much for this presentation. Um, are there any questions? Uh, now, if not right now, as you could see, E61 is the booth you could pass by. There are some more presentations uh, this week where you're involved. Uh, we're looking forward to this. Thank you once again for your time. Thank you. Thank you. So we are already f at the end of the technical forum. There is one last presentation. Uh, starting in a few minutes regarding uh, PEM electrolysis, improving transformation costs through intelligent stack design held by HTAC systems. Um, very much looking forward to this one. I uh, hope you're still happy with your coffees and refreshments. Otherwise, help yourself and see you in a few minutes. Thank you very much. <laughs>